Jim and Mare, July 5th, 2021. I do tree work for some local townhomes in Longmont, and I've been watching over uh, many of their trees for a while. Um, these locust trees around the whole um, community has been a concern for us. We've We've witnessed squirrels stripping the bark like crazy on these trees. We've witnessed um, Cytospora canker and we've pruned that stuff out. So when Cytospora canker was in localized dead branches and such, we pruned those out. We also did fungicide injections on these trees and I'm starting to see evidence for what is called locust borer. I'm gonna zoom in onto this tree and I'm gonna zoom in onto that tree. Walking from my car, which is way over there, this direction, I couldn't help but notice a dead branch. And I thought, hey, did we miss that last fall, last winter, or whatever it was when we pruned? Because I know it was dormant. But then upon just kind of further examination, you can see that this portion of the tree is significantly thinner than the rest. So I obviously zoomed in on that branch, and I'm going to go look at that in a second. So what I don't like seeing on these trees are these exit holes here. These are exit holes from locust canker and same with right here. I've been seeing a huge increase on locust canker. I just published another video on this subject on a tree that is in Niwot. And um, for a long period of time, locust canker has been conventional wisdom that uh, typically doesn't hurt locust trees unless they're stressed. Well, I already know they're stressed, and I can see some gamosis right here, but I also know they're stressed from um, thyronectria canker. In short, we can just call it locust canker. Uh, anyway, what I do is this. You can hear the bark is gonna separate. Over here should be solid. You can't really hear anything, but the, the bark is separating there where it's been attacked by beetle uh, and this is again uh, honey locust borer. So I'm going to move over to, to the next tree. This one's going to have a lot more exit holes and a lot more <clears throat> uh, its bark separation is what that is when the cambium is damaged in some way shape or form. But first I'm going to focus in on the numerous exit holes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, holy cow, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and so on. There's a lot over here. So I know that if I tap right here, it's going to be solid to this sound, but then listen. This is exactly what woodpeckers do when they're looking for insects. They're listening for a void within the bark, like a separation, a void when the bark is separating. Not good sounding. So if I were a woodpecker, I'd be, whoops, I'd be looking right about here. So if I, again, just train my eyes along this branch, <clears throat> this was the one that caught my attention with an isolated lateral that's dying. And then the rest of this upper crown of this leader is thinning. So yeah, the way I started off the video is, you know, am I, I'm concerned for the locust trees, frankly, locally, not just for this community, but locally for squirrel attack, thyronectria, and now I'm seeing a much uh, bigger problem, which is the honey locust borer. The honey locust borer is related to the emerald ash borer, and, well, emerald ash borer is kind of a household name, and many parts of the country, even locally around here. Most people know that name. But what some people don't realize is the emerald ash borer and the honey locust borer are in the same family. Basically the same type. Okay, there we go.